And as the IMF World Bank spring meetings get underway in Washington, D.C., sustainable banking and finance is one issue participants will be looking at today. The Sustainable Banking Network will be discussing policy development and related initiatives to create drivers for sustainable finance in their home countries. And one of the discussions of this session is the director of the Sustainable Business Initiative at University of Edinburgh Business School, Professor Kenneth Amishi, and she, he joins us now from Washington, D.C. Good morning, Professor Amishi. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, I say good morning because it's morning over there. Good morning. Yeah, good morning and also good afternoon where you are. <laughs> Thank you. So what is this um, sustainable banking network all about and what does it seek to achieve? Yeah, the sustainable banking network uh, is, an, is a network of central bankers uh, across um, about 40 countries, um, most of them in emerging markets or what you may call developing economies as well. So the essence of the network is to encourage the central bankers to think about sustainability, broadly speaking, which would include environmental, social, as well as governance issues um, in, in, uh, in, in their different countries, and also to relate those things to the, uh, their regulations and policies. And uh, what will the network be pushing for at this spring meeting? Um, the network is mainly, uh, has continued to encourage uh, peer, peer reviews and peer learning and, and that's one of the things we, we continue to do. Um, and also to think about how to mainstream the conversation on sustainability across the different regions. So it's still a, a learning journey and the, the, the central bankers themselves acknowledge that. And they tend to also learn from each other. So they're learning from good examples of what has worked for others in different countries. So that way they can reach their portfolios. Now, how are countries expected to key into this sustainable banking issue? I'm um, sorry, I, I didn't get the question. How are countries expected to key into this sustainable banking? Um, the, most banks will have central banks anyway, so um, that's one way to, to key into it. So some, bank, some countries have come on board, uh, Nigeria being one of them, the Central Bank of Nigeria will be represented, and also the Central Bank of Nigeria has continued to support and promote sustainable banking in Nigeria. So um, I think in 2012, there was the Nigeria Sustainable Banking uh, Principles, which the bank, uh, the central bank has continued to champion. And most banks in Nigeria and also other financial institutions have come to terms with that, with that agenda. And what would you say are the key issues of um, banking in Africa? Um, banking in Africa, well, one of the key things is that the banks will need to lend to the real economy, isn't it? And, and lending to the real economy would also involve looking at sustainability issues. And broadly speaking, so you wouldn't want to lend projects that will have negative impact on the environment or projects that would have implications for uh, social issues like human rights uh, and uh, environmental pollution. So uh, from that perspective, uh, banks will need to do more uh, and to get more money into the real economy, support the SMEs, encourage financial inclusion, which is also a central part of the sustainability agenda. Uh, and the, one of the key uh, goals of the sustainable, sustainable Development Goals is to ensure that no one is left behind. And that's basically what the banks will need to do. And at what level do you think um, the banking in African uh, continent has gotten to in terms of this um, sustainability issue that we're talking about? Um, to a large extent, it's still a journey. And that's one of the things we try to emphasize here. Uh, most banks have come to it uh, of late. So uh, it's still at the early stages. Uh, and, but the good thing is that there is a positive appetite to take on some of this agenda, and the banks in Africa are not left behind. Yeah. Some time ago, or well, I say a few months ago, or a few years ago, rather, um, Sustainability Banking Group or Network launched what they call the Green Bond uh, Report. Can you take us through what this is all about and how that aims to achieve this um, uh, sustainable banking or uh, sustainable financing? Okay, uh, going back to, to my earlier point, the whole essence of sustainable banking is to ensure that there is a good balance between economic sustainability on one hand and social and environmental sustainability on the other hand. So the whole idea around the green bond uh, or, or green finance, broadly speaking, is to ensure that there is money that goes into environmentally sustainable projects. And that's the whole essence of that. 
to, to, to channel money to things like renewable energy, um, uh, sustainable agriculture, and also to identify projects that are bankable. So one thing is to think about the green issues, but you also need to ensure that they work. So the whole idea around the, the green bond is to identify those projects that are bankable and then channel um, funds and resources into that. And what is the outcome for Africa's banking sector? Well, the Africa, and like I said, it's, it's still a journey. Uh, um, in Nigeria, I think, I mean, uh, Access Bank recently uh, launched a, a, a corporate green bond. So, and it's, 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 it's a Nigerian example of a bank that is taking it forward. So, um, and the, the, the momentum is gradually growing, and that's partly why we are here, to encourage each other and, and share ideas. All right. Thank you very much um, for your time, uh, Professor Kenneth Amishi, and enjoy your stay in Washington. Well, I guess we have to move over now to the European stock market, which was, of course, slightly higher this morning, with EU leaders likely to um, grant British Prime Minister Theresa May a second delay to Brexit. Now, uh, let's talk to Conrad Busen at Frankfurt Stock Exchange for more from the European space. Hello, Conrad. Well, sorry, we're coming to you a little bit late. Perhaps um, it's all about technology here. But let's um, kick up this conversation quickly with the issue of the IMF, which has said that this is a delicate moment for the world economy. The organization has lowered its growth forecast, in particular for Germany and China. And it says some major players like China or Germany might need to take short-term action. Explain these wordings to us. You know, to be uh, in both countries, China and Germany, the governments have focused very much on stability for quite a long time. And uh, the IMF wants, you know, to be both governments to be a little bit less risk averse. Uh, in China, the focus has been very much on a more stable financial system, on a m more stable banking system. Uh, and in order to get that, the government in China has uh, curbed lending in China a little bit. This has only changed very recently, but uh, uh, the, you know, what the IMF wants to hint at is that uh, China could do more in order to invest in its economy and keep its economy uh, from, you know, slowing down. In terms of Germany, the focus on the government, from the government, is very much or has been very much on austerity, on a very conservative way of dealing with government debt and government expensive. Uh, Christine Lagarde and her colleagues at the IMF uh, uh, want to tell the government in Berlin not to focus too much on financial stability and on, you know, uh, very uh, conservative managing of debt, but to focus more on investment in the economy and on domestic demand. That's important right now in order to keep, uh, you know, the economy, the worldwide economy, the global economy from slowing down. All right, Corrida, I guess uh, we'll just have to leave it at, at that. And let's um, continue to follow those developments there at the spring meeting going on in Washington, D.C. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll take a break now, and when we come back, we cross over to the Nigerian equities market for updates on today's trading activities. Do stay with us.